Hello, my name is Ben, and I will serve as your tour guide today. Thank you all for coming, and let's get started. The time period we will be focusing on is German Romanticism, a period in the late 18th and early 19th centuries where many philosophers, artists, and musicians look to the past, especially the Middle Ages, for a sense of cultural unity and national identity. During this time, many figureheads of Romantic art and literature emerged, three of which we will interview today. First, we will travel to the Humboldt University of Berlin in 1810, where we will interview Johann Christian Reil. Welcome to the Humboldt University of Berlin. Here we have Johann Christian Reil, founder of Modern Psychiatry. Tell us a little bit about your background in psychiatry and your work. Hello, Ben. Well, my work in psychiatry began when I recognized that psychiatry needed to become its own field of medicine with specifically trained professionals, not just a branch of medicine or theology. Later, I worked to create moral treatments for patients in insane asylums. These efforts led me to write my first psychiatric textbook, Rhapsodies on the Application of Psychological Treatment to the Healing of Mental Breakdowns, which is considered to be one of the most important documents in romantic psychiatry. Could you tell us a little bit about the university and what brought you here? I worked at Humboldt University for many years, and it was the location where my most significant work came from, the conceptualization of madness explained in my textbook. What was one of your major teachings and findings? The main thing I outlined in my book and teachings is the conceptualization of madness. I have theorized that madness is not just a break from reason, but a reflection of widely changed social conditions. I believe that advances in civilization are what result in more madness rather than seeing madness as a result of physical ailments in the brain or hereditary evil. I believe that madness is a result of disturbance in the harmony of the brain functions. How did this concept affect writers of the time? This influenced writers that were interested in the concept of madness, mainly because it challenged what we thought we knew about the brain and what we thought we knew about society's impact on our internal reactions. So do you think that although they might be viewed as separate topics, findings in science such as yours and developments in art, literature, and music can influence and promote development in the other topic? There is a very significant relationship between scientific findings and arts, and I see it as bi-directional. I believe that scientific findings influence art by giving writers, musicians, and artists new information to explore in their work. On the other hand, I believe that artists have an influence on scientists and their findings by being the catalyst which inspires researchers to think outside of the norm. Interesting. Thanks so much for your time and good luck with your studies. Not only did this time period have artistic developments in painting, music, and literature, it also had intellectual developments and it was a great period of growth in many aspects of life and knowledge. Now we will be heading to the Elba Sandstone Mountains located in Saxony, Bohemia to explore some of the artistic developments and talk to artist Caspar David Friedrich. All right, looks like we've made it. Here we are in the beautiful Elba Sandstone Mountains in 1818, a place made famous by the iconic painting Wander Above the Sea Fog by artist Caspar David Friedrich, who we have here to answer some of our questions. First, give us a little bit of an introduction of yourself. Hey everyone. My name is Caspar David Friedrich, and I am one of the painters of the Romantic period. I was born in 1774 in Greifswald by the Baltic Sea, and I was the sixth of ten children raised in a strict Lutheran household. There I began studying with Johann Quithorp, who encouraged me to sketch nature and introduced me to the connection between religion and nature, two common motifs in my works. After a few years of studies in Greifswald, I moved to Copenhagen to finish my studies before eventually settling down in Dresden, where I now reside. Why did you enjoy painting nature so much? Well, from a very young age, I was taught to respect nature as a revelation of God. Many of the artists of my time all painted nature, but many of them forgot to portray their landscapes with the emotion that they deserved. Society today is so enamored with materialistic things, and I like to think of my paintings as a reminder of the beauty and power of nature. What does your popular Rücken figure represent in your paintings? I chose the Rücken figure in my paintings to draw the focus of the audience to the landscape. 
Adding humans in the paintings help the audience connect with the paintings more because they can see themselves as figures in the painting. With the Rickon figure, it is as if the viewer is the one standing there, admiring the power of nature and feeling that feeling of awe. Interesting. What were some other ideas and feelings that you tried to capture in your paintings? I also try to capture my faith in my paintings through religious landscapes. I want to use my paintings to show the awesome power of nature, but also the presence of a divine spirit. We as humans are small in comparison to nature and are subject to the power of God. Although it is controversial, I think paintings have the ability to convey the power of God more fully than through words. Rather than telling someone how to feel, paintings make the viewer actually feel these feelings of awe and wonder. Great. Thank you for your time and your answers. Romantic art was characterized by emphasis on the sublime, nature, and individualism. Next, we will be heading to Vienna, where we will talk to Claire Schumann, considered one of the best pianists of the Romantic era. Okay, looks like we've made it. Here we are in Vienna, a city where Claire Schumann performed many successful concerts. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, Claire? Hello, Alla. My name is Claire Schumann, and I'm a famous pianist. I started playing piano when I was very young. My father actually taught me. My parents were both gifted in the fine arts, so I was a natural born musician. I started touring at 11 years old, and that was when my career took off. I mostly compose and perform my own pieces, but I also enjoy teaching children how to play the piano as well. Your husband, Robert, is an amazing composer. How did you help his career and popularity throughout Europe? My husband, Robert Schumann, was a fantastic composer. He died young of pneumonia, and I had to put a lot of my life on pause, unfortunately. But him and I worked together to compose plenty of solo piano works, chamber pieces, and orchestral symphonies. Together, we ultimately changed the use of the piano in major pieces to becoming an essential instrument instead of the added bonus it was otherwise highly regarded as. You both are well known for the musical genre of art song or Kunstlied. Could you tell us a little bit about what that is and your work with it? Ah, uh, yes. Kunstlied was a new form of music that developed during the Romantic period. It was widely used to recite poetry with music and became its own popular genre of song. It was also used to interpret these poems as the singer and the instrument took on different roles of the piece. Robert Schumann, Franz Schubert, and myself became known for this type of storytelling. What were some characteristics of your romantic music? My romantic pieces emphasize the importance and prevalence of emotion during the era. Art, language, and music became common vessels in supporting connection to nature, feeling, and self during this time. It was here that many romantic composers changed the way music could be written to reflect the importance of natural, raw emotion. Fascinating. Thank you so much for your time and good luck. As you can see, the period of German Romanticism was an era defined by its emphasis on the sublime, nature, and individualism, as well as developments in other practices such as science. Thank you all for coming along, and we hope you learned a lot. Auf Wiedersehen.